Hello uh, and welcome to Reykjavik Reykjavik's newscast. We're here at Reykjavik's Penin Peninsula for two reasons actually. Uh, but before we go into that, all of that, uh, I want to tell you, of course, about uh, if you come into Iceland in the, in the near future, uh, we have this wonderful, yeah, by the way, like tourism is picking up quite, uh, quite well. So much actually that we think we have like 80 to 90 percent of the booking back uh, in, for the tourist industry, not us, but like the tourist industry, from what it was uh, in 2019. So the business is coming back. But of course, there are some looming news here. Uh, and before we go there, I want to tell you about our, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, we have this booking site uh, on grapevine.is. You can go on grapevine.is and find it, like bookings. And you can book a, a, like a, a walking tour with me and Bjarsmars, where we go, we try to explain why Icelanders are like they are. Uh, we, we never succeed, but it's a really fun way to try. Uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, we have everything. Like if you want to take the flight bus from uh, the airport of Keplavik, uh, like uh, Keplavik Flugvöllur, which is somewhere over there, by the way, uh, you can actually order it there. So you can uh, take a golden circle uh, by t like tours and so on. So it's a, it's a really convenient page for you if you want to check it out. But. Uh, we want to go into, into news. My name is Valo Grettison, of course. I'm a, uh, the editor of, uh, well, ad, just the editor, I guess, uh, in chief at the Reykjavik Grapevine. This is the chief of morale officer, <laughs> Polly. Uh, and as you can see, she is, uh, she is up for this. And we are having the best day ever. We have had so dark months, but right now it's sunny. It's, I think it's around five degrees or something, which is in Iceland, it's like, it's like uh, being on Tenerife or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's go and do news. We're going to tell you a few stories in this episode, of course. Uh, one of them is connected to uh, volcan volcanic activity that might actually be happening in this area. Uh, and uh, more about that later. But what you remember, need to remember is basically the ocean line here. We'll come back to it. But we're going to start with uh, bird flu. The bird flu is in Iceland. It's official. Uh, it's actually devastating right now for the gannets. Uh, and you can see this. Uh, I think it's a gannet here. Uh, very similar, at least. Not. Josie is saying no, but uh, it might it might be. I mean, <laughs> who cares? Uh, the thing is that uh, we started noticing a few weeks ago that a lot of gannets were dying, uh, were found dead all around Iceland. Uh, not only that, uh, the, the island over there, it's called Elte. Uh, in English, this would be like the island of fire. And the reason it's called the island of fire is because it was actually formed out of fire in 1226, I think, uh, in an eruption exactly over there. Uh, and th therefore, we have this little rock there. It's much bigger when you come closer to it. And it's the, one of the biggest habitats of gannets in the world. Uh, but uh, we have a pretty uh, like bad news because uh, the gannets have been found uh, dead there, a lot of them actually, as well as all over the country. Uh, and uh, the Icelandic Veterinary and Food Administration had activated a contingency plan because of this. So farmers uh, with like domestic poultry uh, have been encouraged to shield their livestock from wild birds which means basically to keep them inside. <laughs> uh, they have to keep them inside and they have to uh, make sure that they are not like uh, around wild birds. Uh, the bird flu actually is, uh, I mean, this is like the, the Scandinavia, in Scandinavia, we have this, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, H5N1 strain. Uh, it's not very dangerous when it comes to people. Thankfully, I think we're done with the, the virus stuff. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, of course, uh, we could always get, get it. I mean, there is always some, uh, some I mean, you can't do like, you can't uh, like, there is always a chance basically. Uh, 
Yeah, and the bird flu is now, of course, not only in Iceland. It's also, it's, it's been rising in Europe uh, past days and the past weeks and, and months. Uh, for example, Denmark have had a lot of problems. They have had to slaughter around 200,000 birds at least uh, since the, the start of the year. Um, and then we're talking about like, like, uh, like domestic poultry. Uh, and it's been very hard for the Danish uh, like, uh, uh, farmers industry and so on. And, uh, but the, the reason, reason here that this is on the rise is uh, basically because uh, more uh, wild birds are getting it. And Sula, which is a uh, gannet, uh, it is in Icelandic, uh, they are now, they are of course very wild birds, and they are now getting this. And also ravens, and also we have found in, uh, like, uh, the bird flu in, uh, in an eagle in Iceland, which is quite bad because we, ha we don't have that many eagles. We're always trying to protect them. So it could be quite devastating, to be honest. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and then uh, into the volcano. There is actually 50% chances that there will be a volcano uh, in this area. According to my favorite, actually, vulcanologist, I think I'm saying it right, vulcano, volcano, can't really hear the difference, to be honest. But his name is Thorvaldur Thordarsson. Uh, also, uh, a nightmare is name for non-Icelandic speakers. Uh, but he says, actually, that uh, this area here might erupt, and it's 50% chances that this will happen this year. Uh, I'll take that odds, to be honest. <laughs> but the thing is that there has been a lot of earthquakes. Uh, it started on 13th of April, uh, and we have had, the biggest one is like 3.9 uh, in magnitude. And keep in mind, when, when, the other, uh, when the other one started, which was in, like, uh, in Geldingadalir, like Faradalsfjall eruption, uh, then it was kick-started by an eruption which was 5.8 in magnitude. A much bigger earthquake, actually. But what we can see here is actually is very similar to what we actually saw when it came to the, uh, to in, in Faradalsfjall, when we basically had like uh, the earthquakes were lining up uh, on the, the same area. And this means that the, the magma under there is trying to co come up. So we can see the same area like all around. So when this last happened was in the 12th, uh, in, in the 12th century, uh, then, of course, Alte was, uh, was, uh, was formed. But the thing is also, like, if this would actually happen, we have two options, and both of them are absolutely terrible. Uh, now, okay, one of them is absolutely terrible, the other one is not so terrible, uh, but I want to show you more about uh, around the area, because this is such a hot area and so much to see, and, and because it's such a nice day, we're going to make a day out of it. <laughs> Reykjanes Virkjun. Reykjanes is the name of this area and Virkjun is like a geothermal plant. Just a, just a very uh, short word for it. Uh, this, of course, as you can see, is a very active area. And if it would be happen, actually, if we would have a volcano, let's say in the ocean, uh, that would mean that we would have a lot of ash. Uh, I know it sounds like an ass. I'm saying the ass as in ash clouds. Uh, and, and, and like, uh, so it means that, uh, it, like, if this would happen, and in 1226, uh, when it happened actually, uh, the ash was so uh, much that it went all over this area, all the way to Reykjavik, and even further to the north. Like, uh, it was a huge area that it covered, and this would mean that the people in Reykjavik would wake up in the morning, not to get uh, snow from their uh, cars, but they would have to actually take the... <laughs> take the, uh, the ash of the windshields, which is quite something actually. Uh, but the thing is, of course, uh, if this would happen, it could also be a, like a smaller eruption in the ocean. And that would be the best case scenario. And then we wouldn't even notice if that would happen actually. The reason I'm here is because if the eruption would be in this place, uh, like uh, the means that this power plant here uh, would basically be like uh, in threat. 
uh, also because like we use the geothermal like uh, areas uh, for to heat our houses and get electricity and so on and we do this to by harvesting the volcanoes and by harvest harvesting a volcano you have to actually build a plant up on top of it doesn't sound very smart but it's been pretty good for so far and this means that uh, this could also be in danger if uh, there will be a volcano. Uh, it's unlikely though, it will come completely like up right here. But you can see, for example, it's a similar element like in the Blue Lagoon. There is like bluish water here. All of this is warm, of course. These are like uh, small like geysers. Uh, and it's, uh, it's beautiful actually here. You can see like how like nice this area is. Uh, and the thing is that uh, we have like it doesn't really matter where this volcano comes up. It's always going to be quite dramatic uh, and uh, it's always going to be like threatening us in some ways, except if it will be a small one and in the ocean. And because we are so ridiculously lucky, to be, to be honest, uh, especially in Iceland, I think we, we just might have... Uh... <laughs> See, Polly is so hot. It's like it's eight degrees outside as it just goes straight into the water. 50-50% is not something that uh, all scientists in Iceland are saying. There is just this one volcanologist that is saying that. And he is actually, uh, he's pretty smart. And he, he I, like, he's more often right than not. And I absolutely love this guy, actually. He's, he's very, uh, like, uh, approachable when it comes to the science and, like, when it comes to this. And he's often very right. Uh, so it's like, uh, we know that this area is highly... Uh, highly uh, active, uh, especially after the, the, the eruption in Geltinga, Geltinga And this means that we might actually have uh, at least one volcano. And if the, the earthquake should keep on going, uh, Geltinga Dalir might actually erupt again. So the, the, like, the, uh, like it's sealed basically with, with this cool stone right now, cold lava. Uh, and, uh, but it might actually open again if, if we have, let's say, an uh, earthquake up to like six. Uh, in magnitude, which is uh, like 5.8 5 to, to 6. So, I mean, we just have to see what happens and, and everybody's like on an alert. Uh, we see a lot of uh, earthquakes going on here. And as I often explained before, when earthquakes happen in this area, uh, it's, there are not that many reasons for that. Uh, the most likely reason is basically magma is always working its way up. Uh, and these uh, earthquakes have been like relatively in a shallow depth, if you will, like in eight kilometers depth though. <laughs> but, but still, it, it's pretty shallow when it comes to everything. So, uh, I want to go into the war. Uh, <clears throat> like, of course, there are horrible things that we're seeing from Ukraine now. The Russians are... Uh, they, they're not in their, like, they're, they're, they're absolutely horrible when it comes to this invasion. Uh, and there is no mercy whatsoever. Uh, this has, of course, sparked debate with all the countries uh, around. Uh, and I want to, like, and there is an old, like, a debate that have, uh, like, well, not a debate, but it's like uh, Finland. You know, Finland is, like, with the borders to Russia, of course. Uh, and they have a very complicated history with Russia. Uh, they are now talking about uh, going into NATO. Uh, and f the Finnish people, similar to Icelandic, are not that fond of NATO. Iceland, then again, we, the, the parliamentary, they actually said, that, like, uh, they, they voted yes for going to NATO in 1949, I think. Uh, and, but, but uh, of course, uh, uh, Finland did not. Uh, the thing is that they, now they want to go, uh, the majority of the Finnish people want to go into NATO and an application is, is, has been submissed, submit, submissed, submit, like they have put in an application, uh, both Finland and Sweden, of course. Uh, Icelandic, uh, the Icelandic uh, foreign minister, of course, uh, endorsed this completely. Uh, and this matters a lot to us because, well, Finland uh, has been under threat from the Russians, uh, saying that if they would go into NATO, there will be grave uh, consequences. And we have seen how, what kind of grave cons consequences uh, the Russians actually are talking about when there is a threat about NATO. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, for example, like uh, the complicated relationship between uh, Scandinavia and Russia goes way back. Uh, 
Basically, the, the Sweden was in war with, with the Russians uh, in the 1800s, uh, approximately, uh, and uh, a few years later they lost the land uh, uh, Finland uh, to the Russians. And Finland was, of course, a part of Russia for the longest time. Uh, but it wasn't until the, the revolution, uh, the communist revolution in 1918, uh, and this year before, I think, uh, that the uh, uh, that the, the Finnish people uh, declared democracy. But uh, it was like a civil unrest, there was a civil war uh, between like uh, communists uh, and, and the Finnish people. Uh, uh, of course, this was absolutely horrible. Uh, but after that, it was quite peaceful until basically the Soviet Union, they actually uh, went into, like, invaded, special operation, I guess, but they invaded, of course, Finland in 1939, and they call that the Winter War. Uh, the Finns kind of lost that war, uh, but nonetheless, in 1940, they actually made a, a peace treaty with the Soviet Union, and they lost around, uh, like, eight, like, I think, 8 or 9 percent of their land uh, to Russia. Uh, for so the Soviet Union, they basically acknowledged their uh, independence, but they took a lot of land. Uh, that was the price that they had to pay. Uh, the Finns are no, uh, they are no fans of Russian. Uh, the same goes actually with the Swedes. Uh, you probably just figured that out yourself just by looking at the news, because there are like like extraordinary uh, examples where the Swedes actually, they, they, they say they're always, always neutral when it comes to war and such. Uh, they are, of course, uh, manufacturing a lot of weapons, uh, and they never, and they, but they have made some, ex like, like uh, examples uh, where they want to, they, where they are selling the Ukrainians' weapons, something that they've never, never done before. So there are a lot of, like, uh, bad history going on there. And it would be interesting to see, actually, because the Finland will be uh, like the, the most uh, bright pro projection is that the, 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 fin the Finland, as well as Sweden, will be a part of NATO in the end of the summer. Uh, and just to see the consequences, I mean, it, it's hard to see that Russia can do anything about it. Uh, but uh, it's, it's pretty, we're pretty sure that there will be uh, the aggression against the Scandinavian countries will be much, much more than ever before. Uh, because of this, so it's, uh, and of course Iceland, as we, like we are, of course very, uh, we feel safe. Of course, we're an island uh, uh, in the in the North Atlantic Ocean, a little bit away from Scandinavian countries, uh, but uh, still, I mean, we're, we're definitely part of the Nordic countries and so on. So it will be interesting to see how that actually will go. Uh, yeah, in short, it's like the Nordic countries have a very complicated relationship with the Russians. Uh, this is it for the newscast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful weather, uh, although it's only 8 degrees. I'm trying to sell Josie the idea that, uh, that 8 degrees is actually 20 degrees uh, in, in, like, uh, like in, in Spanish terms, but she's not convinced, although from Scotland, which is a pretty like, uh, cold country also. <laughs> Uh, but you can see here, yeah, this is like absolutely wonderful place. If you want to visit this, uh, the, the area here is Reykjanes. Uh, this is, of course, Reykjanes Virkjun or, or the geothermal plant. And then there is a lighthouse over there. Let's see on the lighthouse also. This is Reykjanes Lighthouse or Reykjanes Viti. And it's uh, a, a well worth uh, checking out. Yeah, and Gunnukver, right. I forgot to tell you what his name. This is Gunnukver. I don't know the story well. You have to just visit the place if you want to find out. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a very nice tourist summer. So, uh, uh, so I I'm probably going to meet a lot of you <laughs> if you want to come. So remember the, the tour and so on. Uh, yeah, that's it. I could have a ski dug. Hey, you go there. I went into my white pants, only for her to be in the in the mud. <laughs> Always slumming it. Mucky pup. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> was it the water or? Yes. I wasn't sure if it was okay for him to drink.